thus we are here at the season finale of our Rata. You know, the ending was better than most this season of summer. I have to admit that. At least it was, you know, it was nice going. But man, can I rip off that CGI every freaking time I see it. I just, just, just poke fun at it. It's so easy. It's so freaking easy. The show tries to be so epic. But it's that CGI that just destroys it, man. <laughs> like, you doing all these cool moves. Who cares? Your CGI sucks. And after watching Azure Lane and other kind of anime, it is possible to make good CGI. But it's just that the studio that they have has crappy CGI. After all, these are the same people that did um, Future Diary. And that one god on there was a terrible CGI model. So the studio has always been known to use bad CGI, in which they just stop using it because it sucks but hey they, they i guess they have to do what they have to do so hajime comes in looking like a badass bringing all his waifus with him and his precious little daughter destroying all the monsters and finishing off a demon with ease you know it's pretty simple when you go on a train with hajime of course you're bound to become super strong it's only obvious that also includes Shia or Tail or the Black Dragon. Dragons are always strong, but they're under Hajime. So, of course, you have to be the strongest. So, a lot of people will say, when I was reading the manga in the past, before a show even came out, people were like, well, it's not going to be that good after he gets on the ladder because he's going to one punch everything, as they would say. I still have my enjoyment out of it, nonetheless. I still like the characters, and I still like the adventure, and I like to see where he's going to end up, and everything that's going to happen. I'm very well invested in that. Now, what I really want to see, what everyone want to see, was everyone's reaction when he came back. His classmates, including Kiori and Shizuka. And, of course, Kiori, who loved them first, but took forever. <laughs> Like, come on, man. Um, the other girls had less time to hang around with him, and they were more confessional than you were for some freaking reason. So, but then again, you live in this world of life and death. It's on like a very thin line. Of course, you will do things more immediately. You'll be more courageous to do something, especially a tribute saying that you like someone. So after seeing Hajime being badass and just taking down the demon. He realized that someone's been borrowing the monsters and someone else has been clearing the labyrinths. Someone's going around and just clearing labyrinths and just, they're looking for something. They could be looking for the Liberator's um, tools as well. So Hajime isn't the only one. You have to remember this in real life. When you have an idea, probably 10 or more people have the same idea as you do. Whether it's at the same time, in the past, or in the future, later down the line. You'll be really amazed how much humans can think of life without even seeing each other, know nothing about each other. But I'm going to stay on that subject too long, which I would really like to talk about, because there are some times where people will make a show or a book or a story, and then it'll look like something else that happened a long time ago. You'll be surprised, like, we all have this direct, unconscious no link to each other, which is very interesting. But, that being said, what I want to get into was the students' reactions, though. People had some expectations of the class, him being in class. Of course, it's what I expected. Everyone would be shocked and amazed of who he is now. This was the boy who was an otaku who didn't put much effort into anything, who was always being bullied and wanted to be by himself all the time. And that what they expect him to be. Plus his hair and his height, his voice, all that has changed. So seeing him now of no eye, well, one eye, one arm, white hair, tall, manlier voice, a more edgier attitude, and a harem of beautiful monster women, and an adorable monster daughter. Of course, they were shocked to see who he is now, a merciless killer. But yet, when it comes to the people around him, he is a happy-go-lucky daddy. Now, of Kiori hearing the word Papa, she had a little anger inside of her. And of course, with the main leader, hero class guy, I can't always forget his name, but anyways, he's the perfect example of a hero, an average main character hero in an anime. Naive, has potential, 
But, like I said, naivete is what gives him in the way from really becoming strong, you know? He's in a world where it's kill or be killed. This isn't the real world, like our world, where there's rules and regulations. You wouldn't kill people there sometimes, and you won't go to jail for it. You won't be charged or anything like that, you know? It's a stand-your-ground kind of world back in the day, or even then. So the rules are different. And being there for a while, he should know that by now. Even if someone's defenseless, the monster will come back and attack you. But like I said, the hero is very, very naive. So he plays his part well. Now, Abedi got out of the labyrinth. A little shock to someone. Me, personally, I don't want any human girls in Hajime's harem. I don't. But unfortunately, I've been expecting this because a lot of people have been telling me that, no, he's going to get some human some chicks from the classroom. And of course, Kiori would be one of them. She came along and he pretty much rejected her, in a way. And and he's like, sorry, I love someone else. And of course, he also loves Shay and Tay. And yes, he did the thing with them. So with this, well, okay, she's not she's not enjoying along, but she came along not because of Haji makes said so, but because you say so, which is very interesting. This is the first time in a harem anime or manga or whatever where the female character, the main heroine, is allowing chicks to follow him. Not because they're following that they're being stubborn or just trying to, you know, get in the middle of a relationship like some harems do. No. She wants her to join along because she has confidence that she can still remain number one no matter how many girls join in. But it's more than that. You saw that in um, episode 10, I believe. Or was it 11? I can't remember. I think it was 11. Yeah, it was 11, where um, he, she was talking to Tio, and she was saying how she wants Hajime to treasure more things. She wants him to loosen up his heart a bit more, you know, not for it to be so hardened. And I believe this is a way she thinks it can happen by having girls who truly feel that way for him to join him. Now, this reminds me of another certain isekai, which I can't wait to be animated, just by the way, wink, wink to show this kind of logic, but that's later down the line. But anyways, she's the one who's recruiting girls. Heck, even when it came to Shizuka, which is the girl I'm actually interested in, anyone in the classmates, Shizuka is what I was more interested in, because, you know, she was the Kong collective, she has a sword, but I don't think she was that interested in Hajime, just, like, you know, just mostly care about Kiori. Heck, I, for one point, thought she was, you know, a lesbian or something, because this is the way she was always acting, but... I guess I was wrong, because even Yui looked at her and says, she's the last boss, which, so, will she be the last one to join the harem? And the question is, is will other girls join it as well? And for her to be the last boss. But, like I said before, I really don't want any humans or classmates in this harem. Just, just monster girls, you know? We got the vampire, we got the rabbit, we got the dragon, you know? That's, that's all he needs, really, man. Of course, you got adorable little daughter. I, I, I don't want anybody else. Any of the humans. The humans do feel like they would slow him down. And plus, don't the hero crew need their healer? If you ask me, it looks like they're losing their recruits every single time. One's already with, some are already with this teacher, and now they just lost their freaking healer. What, what are they going to do now if they're going to travel around inside of another labyrinth? You know, they're screwed. If you ask me, they're freaking screwed because <laughs> what else can they do? They can barely survive, and the only reason why they weren't surviving was because of Kiori. Kiori, in a way, made a very selfish move, in my opinion, which I do understand why she wanted to do it, because she's like, it's now or never, because she's already behind the game, even though she had the first head start. Um, it's ridiculous, though. Because she wasn't really thinking. She was thinking more of her heart than her brain. It's like, okay, well, I'm having these guys. These guys went down the left last time. And they almost all died. But, and she's the only one that kept keeping them alive. by like constantly healing them over and over again. So without her, they're screwed next time. They run into another powerful demon. Unless they get stronger. That's all I gotta say about that. Now, for the final thing. With the guy who shot down Hajime in the beginning... We were all expecting for a confrontation, but 
that's not smart. Why would there be a confrontation? First of all, it doesn't seem like Hajime really cares much about revenge, really, what it seems like. it. Not like the Count of Monte Cristo or anything. He just wants to move on his life and just do things for himself. So, some people were expecting that like, Hajime don't know who did it. He knows that someone did it, but he wants only to do with them. That's why he's dealing himself from some of the people, which makes sense. It also makes sense that he didn't find out in this episode. It makes a lot of sense, so I'm hoping that people will understand that. You know, there's no way if I did something small like that, there's no way I'm going to speak out or doing like that. Yeah, I guess I'll panic a little, but the healer know, they don't know, nobody knows, let's just keep it quiet. So he's just going to move on. Like, hopefully he will start grow as a better kind of villain. I'm actually hoping that the dude grows as a villain later down the line. I don't know, but he makes a deal with Demon, becomes stronger, becomes sneakier, and does pull off some crazy crap that really does bring some damage to the good guy's side. Hopefully he does that. If it is not, he still remains this cowardly character throughout the entire series. That's gonna suck. It really is. So anyways, that's what I got for this, you know. All together, this show had its ups and downs. It had a lot of downs. <laughs> but nonetheless... I still enjoyed it. I will admit that. I like it. The only real problem, the two main problems I had with the series, that I can, of anything I would choose out of the series, I just really didn't like, was one, the CGI, of course, and two, the rush pasting. And that is it. If this episode, if this show was given more episodes. It really just been one thing I really complained about. Really. Well, I guess the third thing, if I want to be nitpicky, is some music um, direction within the show. It was pretty terrible. Now, some women say they need to bring in some soundtrack or whatever in just for it. They didn't really need to do that or bring in a better kind of music or something. But anyways, will they learn from her, their mistakes? Who knows? I do gotta say this, though. I do hope for a season two. According to some charts that people have been pulling up a lot on the fan base sites and Facebook groups, apparently this is doing very well in Japan. So if it does well in Japan, more than likely it will get another season. It's not like this studio really does a lot. So if it does get another budget for anything, I would say work on a season two for this. Now, Shield Hero has been added to Izakai Quartets. Very interesting. Now, what other Izakai will be invited as well? I kind of hope that um, our Forta gets recommended. Despite its flaws, I still kind of like it. And I'm hoping he does get invited to Izakai Quartet along with Slime. Why hasn't Slime been invited yet? Slime was there before Shield Hero. Come on, people. <laughs> it's a slime. <laughs> but anyway, something I'm gonna a bit longer. Um, I was hoping Sky Trek Quartet pretty much finishes in the summer or something. Well, starts in the summer. There's a few more Isekai I like to see. You know, to get added to Isekai Quartet. It depends how long they're playing to do this. It'll be pretty cool. Well, anyway, so that's like I got for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys enjoyed our for to Tell me the cons and pros that you found in this series. And, um, will you like to see another season of this? Because I sure will, but I'd like to hear you guys' thoughts, too. So, anyways, if you like my content, like, comment, subscribe, and of course, hit the bell icon. This has been Matt Crown on Manime. Signing out.